Dakota, will you do that? Let's bless the Lord for the man of God. Lady Oda, let's bless the Lord for her. It's always good to see her. Y'all bless the Lord for him. I, um, I'm taking him back to the West Coast with me. I just kind of made my mind about that since I've been here. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I'm Bishop and I'm going to have a meeting about that at the church. And, I'm gonna and this wonderful musician, I'm taking him with me too. Y'all bless the Lord. I'm taking him with me. back here at home, you know, this is home, I'm no stranger, but you know what I'm saying, God, God, love coming here, and God, I'm going to go on uh, uh, one of my uh, chiefest of adjutants is, is here, all the way from Louisville, and well, I'm in, I'm in Florida, so I can say Louisville, but when you're, when you're in Louisville, you got to say Louisville, but this is one of the, this is the, the, the this, if anybody has their ear to the mouth of God, uh, it's him. Anybody, he's a real one. And y'all bless the Lord for that. Fill up the big fields. Y'all thank the Lord for you. I'm going to keep him this mic at some point before I leave and just let him say something. If the Holy Ghost hit him, I might not say nothing after he does because he is somebody's preacher. Passes a wonderful church there in um, uh, Louisville, uh, Kentucky. Uh, and uh, doing a great work for the Lord up there. My assignment to the word of the Lord tonight. Y'all were singing that in the name of Jesus. I want to make sure y'all understand that. I'm not preaching about that. This is for free. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to say this part for free. And then the rest of it, no. Second, Second Kings chapter four. While you find it, let me say this to you. Because um, we were saying that in the name of Jesus. Everybody say in the name of Jesus. In the name I want to make sure you got some adequate understanding. That is just not what you indiscriminately say or throw his name on. You know, so we just get to talking. We just, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And we figure if we can just get before God and say anything, and as long as we say in the name of Jesus, it's going to happen. Amen. Well, that's not really how it works. When you hear, when he says, whatever you ask in my name, when he says in the name of Jesus, whenever you ask in my name, the terminology there is literally to be interpreted. When you ask something for which my name covers. Well. You can holler. It's all right. You just, whatever. You, you, you ask whatever my name covers, that's when you get it. When, when it's, if, it's, if it's an area of your life, I'm teaching already. I'm a preacher, but I'm just telling, when his name covers it, that's when he does it. it. That's why you have to know what his name covers. In the Old Testament, he had all kind of uh, dispensational names. You have the covenantal names uh, uh, of the covenant. You have the, uh, the names that are related to his messianic function. But in the Old Testament, we had like Jehovah Rapha, he was the Lord, our healer. Jehovah Nisi, he was the Lord, our banner. He was Jehovah uh, uh, Jireh, he's the Lord, our provider. In the, in the Old Testament, you had to know all those, you know, those references to God. They swapped all of that out and just put one name in, in the, in the New Testament, said, at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. So when you say in the name of Jesus, if you know it's an area that his name covers, like Jehovah Jireh, when it comes down to your provision and you have a lack in your life and you pray and you say, now in the name of Jesus, the name covers that. You understand? The name covers for when you have a sickness in your body and you say, now I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Well, his name covers that. And you leave away from the place of prayer with an asserted degree of assurity because you know that's what his name covers. You didn't like that. Let me say it another way. Uh, go check your Bible out when you get home. There was there were two young men in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, uh, 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 Isaac's two boys, Jacob and Esau. The Bible says that they were that the father was getting ready to hand out blessing, and the younger boy Jacob put on Esau, the older brother's clothes, put on his clothes, put on his cologne, dressed up like Esau, 
and went in posed as Esau and got the blessing that belonged to Esau. Now I know you see it in a negative connotation, but the Bible says that it's written upon line upon line and precept upon precept. The book says that Jesus being our elder brother, when we come to him, it's not just coming to him saying in the name of Jesus, it's coming to him in the name of Jesus. When I come to the Father, I don't come to him as me, I come to him as him. He died as me, so that I could live as him. The son of God became the son of man so that the sons of men could become the sons of God. Tweet that one. I, when I come to him, I don't come to him as a foreigner. I don't come to him as a bastard. I come to him in the name of Jesus. What you saying, boy? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. I don't come to him as me. I come to him as him. When he sees me, he sees me through the lens of him. His perspective of me is his perspective of me. His willingness to do for me is based on his willingness to do for him. And there is no good. God, I wish y'all let me preach just a few more minutes. And I'm halfway done, believe it or not. There is no good thing that he will withhold from them that walk upright. Check your book. You didn't walk upright. He did. Come as him. That's right. Yes, sir. This is why I'm going to preach about something in a minute. This is free. And so this is why you hear? I, I can't. God might well just let me leave empty. You, and I'm going to be out there. I know you got to work tomorrow. You got, this, is why, this is why you got to be careful about your handling of him. This is why people during the, the interdispensational period, you call them the Gospels, this was why a lot of them missed a lot of what God had to do. Because they tried to have a relationship with the Father by bypassing the Son, not realizing that the book said in John 14, I think it is, no man comes to the Father. So if you come by him, they tried to do they tried to do that whole thing. We gonna have a relationship with the Father, but we gonna bypass the Son. I don't care which Reformation you come from, whether you're baptizing everybody in the name or one person name. You cannot bypass him to get to him. You have to do the will of him that was sent by him. You understand what I mean? He said, "I didn't come to do my own will." Do y'all? We still preach the gospel, don't we? I didn't come to do my own will. I came to do the will of him that sent me. That's the problem that they had with the church and the gospels. And then the, when he left and went back to heaven, he said, now I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send to you another one, a comforter. And he's the Holy Spirit of God, the paraclete. And he is going to guide you into all truths and righteousness. He will not bear witness of himself, but he will bear witness of me just like I came to bear witness of the Father. You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's what it, and so we, like they tried to bypass Jesus trying to get to the Father, now we have this attitude where we're trying to bypass the Holy Ghost trying to get to Jesus. You're not going to have no relationship with Jesus if you bypass the Holy Ghost. Yes, you need to speak in tongues. Yes, you need to dance in the grocery store. Guess why they're singing? Your hands got to go up sometime if you're trying to claim a relationship with the Son. You can't bypass the Holy Ghost and have a relationship. Y'all don't like the way I teach holiness, do you? And bypass the Holy Ghost to have a relationship with the Son. You cannot do that. You, can, you cannot bypass the Son trying to have a relationship with the Father. There is one look, y'all. If you bypass part of him, you bypass all of him. He is the Lord our God is what? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't, they don't like that no more. They won't be telling me Easter speech. They don't like that. You got to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. Okay, let me tell you. Jesus in the in the gospels, watch this now, was there, Emmanuel. God with us. There was no question about it. Well, he wasn't God. He's just a prophet. Lie. The book said it was Emmanuel. He was God with us. He was the Theos, Anthropos. I ain't going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that some other time. He was oh, the hypostatic God man. All of God and all of man all at the same time. His, his divinity never, if, uh, never adversely affected 
affected his humanity and his humanity, Lord have mercy, never affected his divinity. He was the God man all at the same time. Uh, Aristotle, Einstein called him the unmoved mover who sits on the circle of the earth in control of everything but not moved by anything. You're, he was God manifested in the flesh. Now if you don't agree with that, go find another book besides the Bible to read. Yeah. That's right. He was God. Now watch this now. He was, he said, you have a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. Watch it here, come here. Which was God with us. God with us. And so he is Lord, he is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And he is Lord. He was Lord. He is Lord. Because he was God with us. But don't don't stop reading your Bible. The Bible says. You know where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And if you keep reading past that, it says, now the spirit yes. is Lord. Yes. Uh-huh. Are you saying Jesus ain't Lord? No, Jesus is Lord. But I'm saying right now, Jesus is not walking the face of the earth. He said, I'm going to send to you somebody that's going to reveal me to you. And now the spirit is Lord. The Holy Ghost is our Emmanuel. The Holy Ghost is God with us, y'all. Okay, let me see. Let me see. I'm gonna need, need preaching about this tonight. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. I'm gonna preach in a minute. The, the Holy Ghost is God with us. He is our. Oh Lord, have mercy. He, he is. Somebody shout. He is our Emmanuel. He's God with us right now, and we don't bypass Him trying to get. He's our Emmanuel. And so once we learn how to respect him and declare his lordship, that he does have free reign in my life. Yes. That I am not my own. I'm bought with the price. And the Spirit of God, this is why back, see, you read your Bible. Back in the Old Testament, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon people. It was a temporary occupation. Right. Yes, it, was. it would come upon people and strengthen them to do an assignment. Right. Yes. But after Jesus released him from one place to every place, now the Spirit of the Lord comes and dwells within you. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God, watch it, look at it, dwells in you. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not on you. The Spirit of the Lord only came upon David. It only came upon Saul. It only came up on Samson. But after Jesus got done doing the do at Calvary, now it comes within you. You understand what I'm saying? And, okay, let me see. Let me drive this point home and then I'm going to get to the message. Let me, let me say in other words. And watch this now. The Spirit of the Lord is within you now. And if you go back and, and research the text, it is not, watch, it is not you and the Holy Ghost living in you subject to you. That's not what the language of the text bears. It is not you care. I know old folks ain't on. Take the Lord along with you everywhere. I get it. I sung it with them. But that's not really what was trying to be portrayed here. It's not you carrying the Holy Ghost everywhere you go. It's really the Holy Ghost carrying you Yes. Everywhere he goes. Yes. Let me say it another way. <laughs> the, the, the connotation is that there's more of him and less of you, and he simply wears you like a garment. This suit is not going anywhere that I don't take it. When the Holy Ghost becomes the greater part of you, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, maybe that, that's a whole nother class. I done messed up. I done second king for it. Let me say what I'm going to say. Let me say what I'm going to say. Hey, Mo, you got, you got to make him the greater part of you. I think you got to make him the greater part of you. It ain't some of him and some of you. It's all of him and none of you. You're just a garment. You get worn. You don't get to go. I'm going to holler in a minute. Hold on. Where you want to go. You don't get to say what you want to say. You belong to him. Clap your hands and bless the Lord. That was free. Give me 20 minutes. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to be done. 20 minutes. I can do it too. Second, Second Kings chapter 4. 
Y'all right? I just love the yes. word of the Lord. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a word junkie. Yes. I'm a word junkie. And uh, you, me too, me too, girl, me That's too. Right. 13, <laughs> chapter 4. Uh, I'm getting amen. older now. And so, you know, I've learned to just say amen. Amen. Praise God. Second Kings chapter 4. You there? Yes. Uh, verse number 16. This it just gives a little bit of the historicity of this text, uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. Is that the cup? Do we stand for the reading of the word, apostle? Yes, yes we just do. just do that, then I'm going to stick to the, uh, to the uh, customs of the house. It's good to see y'all, man. I love coming to Atlanta. Y'all know that. Amen. Yes, amen. So, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all take care amen. of each other. Take care of the pastor. Yes. We're amen. talking about we're going to spend a couple of days together. Amen. You tell your cousin Shanique with him to be at church tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My sister. Yes. 16, verse 16, it says, Then he said, About this time next year you shall embrace a son. And so she, this is the Shunammite woman, she said, No, my lord, man of God, don't lie to your maid servant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elijah had told her. And the child grew, and now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, my head, my head. So he answered, said to his servant, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men yes. and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. Yes. So he said, why are you going to him today? It's neither new moon or Sabbath. And she said, it's well, it is well. And she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, look at these words, drive and go forward. Yes. And do not slacken the pace for me. Slide. Unless I tell you to. Look at 24 again. She saddled a donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward and don't slow down for me unless I tell you to. Oh I want to preach to you tonight a very simple message. Just everybody look at somebody eyeball to eyeball. If they won't look at you in the face, look at them in the forehead. But look at them. And tell them those four words. Tell them your command today. And your command for 2016 is to drive and go forward. Look at somebody else and tell them, drive and go forward. Now, if you know that this is your season and this is your turn to get it done, come on, give God a praise. If you know it's your season and your turn to get it done. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God be our strength tonight. I am peculiarly interested in this particular text for a number of reasons uh, because we have got to a new year and I wanted to you know one of the things I would try to you know get around to the churches and whatnot and and I and I'm excited about what God has for you in your 2016 is there anybody that's excited about what God has in front of you uh, I'm going to ask again I said is there anybody excited about what God has in front of you I don't know about you. I think I preached a message the last time I was here. It's already, it's already looking better. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's already looking better. God has already got some stuff worked out for me, worked into my future, worked into my destiny. And I'm starting to realize the older I get that the benefit of God is not just in the destination. It's in the journey that takes you to get there. It's enjoying God along the way. Experiencing the benefits of God as you walk out the plan of God for your life. And how many of you have purposed in your soul and purposed in your spirit that you are going to walk out everything that God has for you in this year of your life? I spent too much time on the side of the road last year looking at people to be successful, looking at other people get things accomplished, desiring so greatly and so deeply for it to happen to me. And But it seems like as soon as the turn of the year hit, something just bumped up in my spirit and said, it's your turn this time. Is there anybody that feels that and know that it is your turn this time? This is why I never start tripping with folk when God start blessing my neighbor. I really never wanted what God was giving my neighbor. I didn't, you know, if he's blessing somebody else, he's blessing somebody else. 
and I always got excited when God started blessing my neighbor because if you blessing my neighbor that must mean he's in my neighborhood and that must mean I got to be next and not too many more too many more days he's gonna have to stop by my door after so and so I've learned to stay consistent and I came to tell somebody it ain't gonna take me long to preach at all I came to tell somebody I ain't might not be talking to everybody but I know I'm talking to somebody for those of you that have been faithful and for those of you that have been waiting on God I came all the way from across the country to tell you that your faithfulness is about to pay off for you is there anybody that believes and understands that your faithfulness is about to pay off for you. I'm talking about y'all that's been tithing when you couldn't afford to tithe. I'm talking about giving and showing up and serving when you didn't feel like it. Tolerating things longer than you wanted to tolerate them. Dealing with Negroes that you didn't even want to deal with. I came to tell somebody that your faithfulness is about to pay off for you. Is there anybody that can receive that? That your faithfulness is about to pay off for you. Just do me a favor. Look at somebody and tell them your faithfulness is about to pay off for you. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter what you don't have. It doesn't matter who is with you. It doesn't matter who is not with you. It doesn't matter. Listen, to understand this, that whenever God asks you to do something, he very rarely asks you what you got. He always plans on working a miracle with what he's going to provide for you. So if you are in one of those situations where you don't think you have enough, I want you to know you are in the right position for God to do something great with you is there anybody that knows what I'm talking about tonight you are right in the condition you are right in the predicament where God can do something with you the, the travesty in the body of Christ today is that everybody wants a resurrection but don't nobody want to die everybody wants God to do something great with them for them but they don't want to go through the process if God is going to raise you up at some point you're going to have to be down if God is going to heal you at some point you're going to have to be sick and so I've learned like the apostle Paul whatever state I'm in they're with to be content because I understand fully that if I can have it, he can heal it. If I need it, he can supply it. If it's closed, he can open it up for me. Is there anybody that knows that he says, the Lord, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for God? How many of y'all know he can do the impossible? He's still walking on water. He's still opening blinded eyes. He's still unstopping deaf ears. I don't know what kind of uh, Jesus you're believing in, but watch what the Bible says now. The Bible says this in the book of John, I believe it is, chapter number 7. He said, watch, if you can believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of your, I'm, I'm going to preach in a minute, hold on, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Watch what the text says. It says, if you can believe on me, as the scripture has said, not your favorite preacher, as the scripture has said, not your favorite pastor, but as the scripture has said, out of you will come a flow. A flow. If things have not been flowing in your life, there is not an absence of Jesus. There is not an absence of word. There is an absence of belief on him like the scripture has said. This is why you can have one area of your life flowing, but another area of your life clogged up. Because you're not believing on him about that like the preach boy, like the scripture has said. So you can have believing him about healing down pat. But if you're struggling believing him about financial provision, then you'll be healed and broke. Because y'all don't hear me. You understand what I think the Bible says that you can believe on him like the scripture has said. Out of you will come a flow. And that's why I'm careful about what I know about him because what I know produces a flow. Once I know that I didn't say believe, I said once I know that he is a provider, then provision starts to flow for me. Once I know that he is a healer, then healing starts to flow for me. Once I know that he is a way maker, then way making starts to flow for me and this is why I understand that it don't matter what condition that you are in God can work a miracle right there will you do me a favor look at somebody and tell them your miracle is gonna start from right where you are tell them tell them look at somebody else and tell them your miracle is gonna start right from where you are don't you ever forget that God specializes in taking unrighteous things and making them righteous. He specializes in putting happy endings on terrible beginnings. He 
specializes. See, this is why the Bible says the evening and the morning were the first day. It does not say the morning and the evening. It says the evening and the morning. We don't go from good to bad. We go from bad to good. Y'all got this thing backwards. You got to follow him. And I came to tell somebody wherever you have been, just as sure as you cross over into 2016, I came to tell you that it is morning again. Will you do me a favor and look at somebody tell them it's morning again. Come on, tell somebody it's morning again. It's a season of fresh opportunities, the fresh advancements, doors that are going to be represented to you again. I came to tell somebody that whatever the opportunity is, Mephitis, whatever the problem is, I came to tell you that if you felt like you lost some opportunities last year, you felt like there were some doors that you didn't walk through last year that you wanted to walk through, I came all the way from the coast with the most to tell y'all folks on the east coast that it's coming around again. Will you look Get somebody tell them it's coming around again. That opportunity is circling the block and it is coming around again. You were messed up in a bad relationship the last time it came, but it's coming around again. You were tied up around a bunch of go-nowhere people with a no-nowhere attitude, but it's coming around again. Will you please lift up your voice and shout, it's coming around again. And this time I'm going to be ready for it. This time I'm going to be prayed up for it. This time I've got my mind made up that I'm pressing on the upward way. I'm here, I might as well preach on the new heights I'm gaining every day. Is there anybody that knows it's coming around again? If you believe it's coming around again, I dare to jump up and turn around one time and shout, it's coming around again. Yeah, it's coming around again. The opportunity is coming around again. God, I feel like preaching right there. Just tell somebody it's coming around again. You might as well dry the tears from your eyes. Because weeping only can endure for a night. But joy is coming around the block again. Somebody shout it's coming around again. Let me, let, let me say this. So you can say I preach the text. See, see this is what you got to understand. See, because God in this season of your life, hear me and hear me good. And then I'm going to jump to the text. And if you don't hear anything else I say tonight, you hear this right here. In this season of your life, God is trying to direct you, sir. God is trying to direct you, ma'am, based on his purpose and not on your preferences. Did you hear what I said to you? I said God is trying to direct you based on his purpose and not on your preferences. See, God does not tailor his will based on what you like or based on what you dislike. He needs done by you what he wants done through you and to move you to the next level of your life and purpose on this earth, you've got to get it done. That's why there are some things that you prefer that are not going to happen for you. He's directing you based on his purpose, not based on your preferences. And that's why there are roads that I'm preaching good on. Already. That's why there are roads that you have to cross that you don't want to cross. Things that you have to address and deal with that you don't have to do. Can, can I tell you something somebody told me the other day? That's why when you're building something, there is no way to build something without having a mess to clean up. Anybody that's building anything at some point will have to clean up a mess somewhere. And so don't you can't get frustrated in the mess of the matter. See, this is what separates the men from the boys. It's when you can allow God to, to lead you based on his purpose and not on your preferences. It's the harvesting tool that determines who's who in the zoo. It's the harvesting tool that determines whether you are in this thing for you or whether you are in this thing for yourself. Yes, it's your life and you can live your life the way you want to but I want you to know that if you love him, something inside of you has to scream. It's not my will, but thy will be done. Is there anybody here that wants more than anything to want God more than anything? Uh, will you just lift up your hands and say, I want more than anything to want God more than anything. See, at the end of the day, you have to make sure that he says, well done, good and faithful servant. And this is what it means to live sacrificially to him. What does this got to do with this Unimite woman? Bishop, I'm so glad you asked. And then I'm getting ready to close. You ready? Let's ride, Tonto. Just, I want you to understand that everybody say, drive. drive. No, you have to say it with some strength. Say, drive. drive. And 
and go forward. Point your finger at somebody, tell them, I said tried and go forward. I want you to understand that this Shunammite woman, she was not a broke woman, she was a notable woman in town. And the Bible says in the earlier verses of chapter number four that she had set up a room in her house, her and her husband, so that every time the man of God would come through town, she would drag him in and make him get something to eat and she prepared a room for him in her house a room for the carrier of the anointing in her house there was a space in her house that was reserved for the spirit and for the presence of god might i say to you that the reason why most of us get in trouble is because we don't have a space in our life that is reserved for the presence of god and that is reserved for the anointing of god we only come to church when it's convenient we only come to church when it fits in our program. We only read the Bible when our back is against the wall. I'm so sick of these fair weather church folk that only show up when they got a problem going on. They only need God when their electric bill is due. They only need God when they get that overdue email from AT&T saying if you don't pay your phone by Friday we're going to shut it off and they don't get paid in 10 money. I'm sick of these. Can I tell you something? When I came to Jesus I don't just trust him with my problems. I trust him with my life. Is there anybody here like me, I don't just trust him with my problems. I trust him with my life. Everything don't have to be going upside down for me to seek God. I've learned how to seek him before the trouble breaks out because I understand that God always gives me an opportunity to make a sacrifice before the situation comes. This woman made a sacrifice before the situation came. She had sowed into the man of God. She said, just come slay in here. And the Bible said that when he was getting ready to go somewhere else, he looks at the woman and says, all right, now what you want me to do for you? You've been taking care of me. You've been concerned about me. What do you want me to do? And the woman looked back at him and says, I'm cool, Reverend. Don't forget, player, you living in, I mean, prophet, you living in my house. I live amongst my own people. There's really not much I really need you to do for me. I'm not broke. I was blessed when you got here. And so the prophet looks at his servant and says, well, what can we do for this woman? Because how many of y'all know that you should be able to reap if you've been sowing? Ooh, I'm closing I said, you should be able to reap if you've been sowing. And she said, well, what can we do for the woman? And the, and, and the, and the, and the servant looked at her and said, well, she ain't got no kids. She don't, she don't have a son. And the prophet looked at her, watch this now, and says, about this time next year, you are going to give birth to a son. And she said, hold on. Don't lie to me and don't play with me. I'm not asking you for this. I'm not believing for this. But you trying to tell me some stuff. Watch this now. How many of y'all know you can get to a place in your life where you have been a certain way so long to where you don't even want a word to come in and bother that? I've gotten so used to not having it for so long that I, I'm preaching good already. That I don't need you to come in and tell me something now and upset the apples on my cart. I just as soon as well, you tell me thank you and go on where you going. Don't come in here now telling me something about I'm going to have a kid. Me and him was trying to have a kid six months ago and it ain't worked. And now you're going to come in here and tell me about, but lo and behold, sure enough, a year later, how many of you know that God will do just what he said he's going to do? Will you do me a favor tell somebody I'm running to the house? Will you tell somebody God's going to do what he said he's going to do? Yeah, he's going to fulfill every promise that he made to you. The Bible still says in Numbers 23 and 19, he says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Have he said it? Shall he not do it? Didn't he speak it? And won't he make it good? How many of y'all know he's going to make it good to you? Everything that he's promised you, he's going to make it good to you. Your faithfulness at some point is going to pay off for you. The Bible says that that woman had the son like the man of God promised her. But one day, one day, one day, one day, he was on his way out to the field to take some lunch out there to his daddy. And the Bible says uh, that he grabbed his head and he had the equivalent of what we would call, y'all don't mind if I preach just for five more minutes, he had what we would call a heat stroke. And the Bible says that the prophet or the man of God said, send him back to his mama. And the Bible said that she rocked him and rolled him on her knees all day long. But the boy died on her lap. Isn't it amazing when you get a promise from God, but it ends up dying? I know 
y'all not going to tell the truth. But have you ever had something that God promised you die on you? And maybe I'm the only one. Maybe we're the only one, don't I? That God promised you something. And then later on, it turned around and died on you. And it wasn't that this was just a promise that God made. It was an unprovoked promise. See, it's one thing if something dies that I ask God for. But it's a whole nother thing when something dies that I did not ask God for. I didn't invite this chaos into my life. That if I would have known this was going to come to me and die, I would have told you to keep it to begin with. I would have said, no, thank you, baby. I'm fine just where I am. Is there anybody that had an unprovoked promise or die on you? You didn't ask God for this anointing. You didn't ask God for this ministry. You didn't ask God for this husband. You didn't ask God for this wife. I wish you would take the mask off. Halloween ain't till October. Tell the truth. You've had something die on you before. And you're looking there rocking a promise. Is there anybody here that has had to rock your promise and you end up rocking that thing to death? But I rose to tell you, let's ride, Tonto. I'm ready to go, come on. I said I rose to tell you that as long as you're connected to the resurrection and to the life, it's never too late for a last minute miracle. I wish I had somebody that for a last minute miracle I said the Bible says that that woman said take the boy up to the room that the prophet used to sleep in in other words take him to the place in my house that I reserved for the anointing how many of you know that when trouble arises you got to take your problem huh, to the place in your life huh, that's reserved for the anointing. Huh. It might be a preach, huh, but take your problem there. Huh. It might be a song, huh, but take your problem there. Huh. It might be your prayer life, huh, but take your problem there. Huh. I gotta go, huh, but tell your neighbor, huh, I got somewhere I can take my trouble to. Huh. Come on, tell your neighbor. Huh. I'm never out of options. I serve a God that specializes in taking bad things and making them better. Don't you ever forget that Sarah was barren. Abraham was old. David was unskilled. Saul was arrogant. Samson was stupid. Solomon was dumb. Y'all don't hear me. My father knew was ignorant. Bartimaeus was blind. Naaman had leprosy. And Lazarus was dead. But God's got a way. I wish you tell somebody. God's got a way of turning it around. Tell your neighbor. God's got a way of turning it around. Is there anybody in here that's waiting on God to turn it around? Is there anybody in here that's believing God? Turn it around. I came to tell you, if you're in between a rock and a hard place, God's about to work a miracle right in between your rock and your hard place. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he make a way? Won't he open the door? Won't he, 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 won't he do it? Just tell your neighbor, tell him he'll do it. He'll do it. The Bible says that he told, he told a servant, go get me a donkey. It don't have to be a fancy horse. I don't need nobody cute right now. Just get me something that can handle the wind, that can handle the rain, and saddle that boy up at her instructions. She looked at the young man and she said, I want you to do this. Drive and go forward. Just look at somebody and tell them drive and go forward. You know what that girl's saying. She said, shut up and drive. Just look at somebody and tell them shut up and drive. I want you to drive and go forward. In other words, along the way, 
to get your miracle this year. There's going to be some distractions, but drive and go forward. People are going to try to stop you, but drive and go forward. Everybody ain't going to go with you, but drive and go forward. They're going to say you're crazy, but drive and go forward. They're going to scandalize your name, but drive and go forward. You ain't going to have all the money, but drive and go forward. People that said they wouldn't leave you are going to walk out on you, but drive and go forward. I wish you would shake your neighbor's hand and tell them neighbor, tell them neighbor, tell them neighbor, drive and go forward. Set your eyes on the prize. Look to the hills from which come your help. Oh, oh, all of my help comes from the Lord. Just tell your neighbor, I'm in overdrive. I've been waiting and I've been praying. I've been believing God. I've been holding on. And now is the time for me to drive. Just look at somebody and tell them stay the course. Stay the course, stay the course. Sometimes in life, all you got to do, if you want to win, is refuse to give up. I said sometimes in life, if you want to win, all you got to do, is refuse to give up. Tell somebody, don't give up now. Don't give up now. You've already been through the worst of it. You've already been through the bad part. Ain't nothing left but the good. You've already been through the water. You've already been baptized. You've already been converted. Just tell somebody dry. Good evening, y'all. Good evening, y'all. I see you tomorrow night, but I got a question for you. Won't God make a way? Won't God turn it around? Won't God? Fix it for you. I dare you. I said I dare you to walk to somebody and tell a neighbor it is well. Tell a neighbor it is well. Son at the house lying dead, but it's well. Ain't got no money, but it's well. Ain't got no friends, but it's well. Church members acting crazy, but it's well. I rose to tell you, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to, the world didn't give it to, I feel like weak. The world didn't give it to, and the world can't take it away. Just tell your neighbor, tell them it's all right now. Come on, grab somebody, grab your neighbor by the hand and tell a neighbor can I go up tell a neighbor it's all right now keep on pressing keep on believing many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivereth them out of them all tell somebody drive we that be God a good work in you will perform it until the day of the Lord, they want to know why you're driving. Tell them I believe that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Tell somebody a thousand will fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand. But it will not come near me. Squeeze that hand and tell them drive, baby. Drive, baby. You're almost done with school. Drive, baby. You're almost done building the church. Drive, baby. You almost got that spouse. Tell somebody, lift up your head. Oh, your gauge and be lifted up. You everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Somebody lift your voice. Shout drive, baby. Drive, baby. Keep on driving. 
Put up the feeders, huh? Keep on driving, huh? Lady older, huh? Keep on driving, huh? How many of you know, huh? That the Lord will, huh? He'll make it all right, huh? He'll make it all right, huh? Yeah, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, huh? Just tell your neighbor, He will make it all right, huh? It's all right now, huh? Just walk over to somebody. Come on, walk over to somebody. Walk over to somebody. And tell them it's all right now. It's all right now. It's all right now. Yeah, yeah. It's all right now. I might as well praise him now. Don't wait till the battle is over. It's all right now. Don't wait. Until you see it in the bank, it's all right now. Don't wait until you feel better in your body. But it's all right now. Somebody praise and praise him. Clap your hands. Lift your voice. Open your mouth. Give the Lord a praise. It's all right now. Come on, somebody shout drive and go forward. The miracle in front of you. It ain't behind you. Few more rising. Set it up the sun. You'll make it all right. You'll make it all right. Yeah. Shout yeah. I'm gonna shout in a minute. It's gonna be all. Anybody know what's going on? It's gonna be all.